Identity confirmed. Welcome Agent AMG. Your mission should you choose to accept it, is to review this new BMW M5, but you must do this while remaining completely objective, especially in light of your AMG power. past. Power, 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 so much power. <laughs> That's gonna be difficult. This message will self-destruct in 5 seconds. Alright, let's see what you're made of. So for me personally, it was always going to be a mission that on the face of it seemed nigh impossible, especially given my Instagram namesake as Mr. AMG. And then our most viewed videos on YouTube were that of the E63S, this car's main rival, where we reached our biggest viewership. A car so good that the only way I could surmise my feelings for it in the video's thumbnail was to kiss the bloody thing. So now I'm faced with the rival, the bitter rival, Munich's mad M5. Never a car for the faint of heart. The M5 has always been considered the one to set the formula for the fast super saloon. It's always been considered as a supercar shamer and it's pretty much the first car we think of as petrol heads when we see the word sleeper. So it's got big shoes to fill in terms of its heritage. But now for the first time ever, the M5 is not rear wheel drive and it's only available in a switchable four wheel drive. But I will get to that soon because that is one of the best things about this car. Let's first tackle the design of the outside and the inside as well as the tech that you can get in this new M5. So I've had this car for a little while now. I've got various reactions which I'll talk about afterwards. Let's first just talk about the design here. And I think the front end is very, very modern M. It is very similar to me like the M8 concept that you might have seen in terms of the lower mouth and indeed the M2 which I think is the best designed M car in modern history. So that's really good. I think it's got a very M front. I think the one thing that lets it down is that the arches on the front generally aren't wide enough. Otherwise it's a pretty, well it is what I expected the new M5 to kind of look like. The side of the car, it's probably the part that I think looks the least like the normal non-M5 series because as someone once pointed out to me, the standard one has got like a hockey puck shaped side sill, I guess. Not puck, hockey stick shape rather, sorry. I'll show you exactly what I mean uh, on this car. And that's not on here now. This has got the M style wing over the front wheel arch, which looks really good. It's very what you expect on every other M car. And you've got, of course, the very shapely and lovely looking wing mirrors, which are an M feature as well. Now the wheels, they're okay, they're multi-spokes. This is at the moment the only wheels that you can get on this car. You've got these in gloss black or you've got the diamond cup finish. Uh, they're all right, but when I look at older cars like the previous M6, which had some gorgeous wheel options, I just wonder why these are the only ones you can get. And on a spec like this, I'm sure you guys are struggling to see the car because when you've got such a bright white paint against gloss black wheels especially, it just doesn't quite allow you to see the wheels. And that brings me on to the calipers. I want to have a bit of a moan about calipers with M in general. When the M lights now get these exact blue calipers and your flagship M5 is carrying the same, for me, it dilutes the effect of it on this car. This maybe should have had something different, maybe red, 
maybe yellow. I don't know what the kind of the scheme should have been, but to have it exactly the same as your M lights, it doesn't sit well with me. It's why like with cars like a, a non-S AMG and an S AMG are differentiated by silver calipers in red because you know when you've got the red, you've got the, the flagship model. But otherwise, the side is brilliant. Um, it needed that departure from the normal five and it does look, it actually reminds me quite a lot of the old five. And of course, you also got the carbon roof, which looks lovely and no doubt helps with the weight reduction. Now the rear is really nice on this to me. It's exactly what I expected the M5 rear to look like. It is very similar to the old one, actually. Um, I feel like M are almost going along this Porsche 911 route where each iteration isn't changing that much, playing it a little bit safe. But because I'm so used to seeing M cars look like this, it's kind of what I expected. You've got the nice quad pipes, which are all real, um, unlike some trims which some manufacturers are using and generally the bottom diffuser, even the little reflectors on the side are well positioned. Again, I just wish, and this is the feedback I got from people, that the car had wider arches on the front and rear, like the M3, like the M4. It just would have helped make this car that much more aggressive. And indeed, it would have given the E63 a bit of a bloody nose, which has only got the wide in front. But this really hasn't even got that, so a little bit let down on that. But otherwise, I'm sure in another spec where you can kind of see the wheels and the body a bit more this is a pretty stunning design but now let's head inside let's talk about the interior and the tech that you can get inside this m5 now as soon as you get in the interior it's a big upgrade from the previous m5 and it's important to note that straight away perhaps not the dashboard as much but certainly your driver zone immediately as you get in is very very different so if we now turn this on you'll see that we get a lovely m a sort of intro screen in front of you, which is what a lot of the manufacturers are doing now. Really nice, the animated looks good. And then springs to life the new digital display in front. I'll talk about this more when we're driving, but BMW have not really gone all out in terms of giving you any options for different type of displays. You go into different modes, it doesn't really change that much. And I think the goal behind it was to have a more analog feeling display and that certainly was achieved. How you feel about that is down to personal preference. The first thing that will hit you is these M buttons. Um, they split opinion. Again, I'll talk about them more in the drive, but they look nice. They're in a nice sort of satin metallic uh, red finish. You also get a matching red start-stop button for the engine, which again, I quite like. I'm not gonna moan about that. The steering wheel, I like the fact that you have the heated uh, steering wheel button right in the middle because that's always too hidden away on most steering wheels. The dashboard, it's very traditional BMW. Everything is angled towards the driver. This entire middle section with the screen and all the main commands, all angled here towards me. And it really gives you the feeling that you are the most important person in the car, which of course you are. Most cars these days are symmetrical. In BMWs, like we tried the recent X2 as well, everything points towards you. And this is, I think, something you'll see continued throughout in all their cars, as it should be. It's very much a BMW trait. And it's nice to see that they've maintained that here. So another bit you've got here, of course, you've got the updated iDrive system, which is now all touchscreen, as we've seen in recent cars. It works really well. It's a very logical system. I did a lot of miles in this recently, and it was pretty much bulletproof. This then links really nicely to something called BMW Connected Drive. And as we showed you earlier in our little intro sequence, you can bring up the app and it will even show you a 360 of where the car is actually situated right now. It's amazing and you can do that anywhere around the world. It gives you a full sort of 3D map of the place and, and it's just something I've not seen in another car. It's really well done and you can kind of see exactly what's going on in that point around your car. There is an option for ceramic finishing and you can see that on this control knob here. Looks really nice, gives a premium look. And that brings me to this part here, which is the actual drive unit of the car. I love the fact that the gear stick is here. I really have an issue with the stalks. I'll talk more about that when we're driving. You've got all the M setup buttons here as well. There's even an exhaust button for the first time. It's brilliant that we actually have that here now. Now the buttons on the front here on the dashboard, these are all touch, even though they look like physical buttons and you can set up little shortcuts. So we've got M setup, sound, heads up display, which is on this car, uh, sports displays, and other bits and pieces that you can set up as shortcuts between these seven numbers here. 
And then at the bottom, quite interestingly, there's another digital display here for the climate control. It doesn't seem, in fact, it's not anywhere near as high res as the screen above. So it already looks kind of dated. So that was a bit of a weird choice in my opinion, but that's all touch again. It works fairly well. You've got two cup holders. There's even the wireless charging mat, which is becoming more and more common among cars. Loads of storage in the, in the driver's door as well. And you've got a huge, huge boot in the back, which I'll show you now. Seating position, you can get nice and low, perhaps not as low as I would like. It almost feels like this was made more for the Autobahn blasters, but it is a nice seating position. These seats, I must commend BMW M on these seats. These are brilliant. I especially love the shoulder part here, which, which really cushions you into the car. They're all adjustable. You've got the lighted M5 logo in the headrest as well, and it looks a really sporty but comfortable seat. You've got a load more options now in ambient lighting as well, so it's good to see more options there. You've also got the M stitching on the seatbelt, which is a really nice little touch, but it's something everybody notices as soon as they get in the car. Now, of course, this car does have the gesture system. I don't think that's really gonna last that long. I think it's gonna eventually disappear because it's been ridiculed so much and I've, I never used it in the thousand miles that I did in this car at all. And when I did, um, actually I did use it a couple of times and I looked really stupid doing all this kind of thing. The standard trim here is this silver, kind of carbon fiber, kind of weird, cheapy, plasticky, silly, don't like it at all kind of trim. Carbon would look way, way better. This is just, it just looked cheap compared to the rest of the lovely brushed aluminium and Nappa leather interior that you have here. In the back, it's pretty roomy. The seats are a little bit upright, but you've got loads of headroom. I really do like the design, which I just noticed of the lights above your head. I'll show you the front and back. Really nicely designed in a gloss black finish with some interesting lighting details. In terms of the space you have, I don't know, it feels a little cramped to me for a 5 Series, but you have got the luxury climate control. It's all nicely stitched, like the front, and you've got these manual blinds as well, which are an option which can be really useful, and we've got the rear roller blind as well. So it's a nice interior to sit in the back of. But now, enough talk about details and other things. Let's get to the main event. I'm having issues to putting my seatbelt on without looking. There you go. Sorry. Let's get to the main event. Let's drive this thing. Let's see how different this engine has been tuned. Let's talk about the engine. Let's talk about the changes and see how this new M5 feels having ditched the rear wheel drive and gone to X-Drive. So I've done quite a few miles now in the new M5 and my first impressions when I started driving it were it feels very much like Munich built an E63. And that's odd because normally it would have been the other way around where the E63 was considered the AMG version of the more well-known M5. And let me say that is absolutely a compliment because it is widely regarded that the E63S, till this came along, was the best performance saloon in the world. So if I'm driving it and I'm feeling, oh, this is quite similar to the E, then that is a great thing immediately. But then I drove it more and more and more and I started seeing more of the character of the M5. But I'll get into that. First, let's talk about what this car is for the uninitiated. This is probably the best known BMW period. It is to BMW what the 911 is to Porsche, what the S-Class is to Mercedes, what the DB series is to Aston Martin. It is the most infamous M car and it is the flagship as well. And this one has a modified engine from the previous version of the car. It's the same V8 4.4 liter twin turbo engine, but now it's got more power and the power has risen to 592 brake horsepower, which is 40 HP up from the previous car. We've also got more torque. We've in fact got 750 Newton meters. Uh, in pound foot, it's gone up by 50, which was about 10% on the old car. And all of this has been achieved by tweaks to the engine, more injection pressure, and of course you've got now more leeway thanks to the X-Drive system where the car can put more and more power down and it's allowed M to up the power on the engine. Now X-Drive and M5, two things I'd never thought I would see side by side and certainly not as the only model available. 
but that was perhaps in the past. In today's market, you could not have had it any other way. With the E63 having come out first, introducing a car with 612 brake horsepower, switchable four-wheel drive, it was inevitable that Munich would have had to have done something that would have at least have kept up with the E in their own way, and they have. It makes sense in today's market to have the M5 as a X-Drive car. But although it's X-Drive, the pleasant thing is that the car most of the time feels rear-wheel drive, and it is rear-wheel drive most of the time. All this system does is add to the experience by engaging with you when you want more grip out of the car at the right times. Now, of course, you get to decide how much that X-Drive system assists you with the grip level on the front and any slippage on the rear. You can set it to the medium setting, which is a more sportier stabilization with the X-Drive still engaged, or you can go all the way to full rear wheel drive, just like in the E63. Uh, the bit that I like about this car, however, I've set rear wheel drive onto M2, and it's a lot easier to engage where you have to sort of put in your date of birth and your national insurance number and a bunch of other secret passcodes and handshakes in order to get it engaged in the E63S. With this, I can just press M2, confirm again with another tap of M2, and we are straight away in two-wheel drive. It shows that in the driver zone, and there's no messing about like there is in the E-Class. And BMW must be commended with the weight on this car because they have managed amazingly to keep the weight, I believe, just a tiny bit under the previous M5 despite adding the X-Drive system, which is brilliant because the E-Class definitely gained in weight and any other car where you add a four-wheel drive system, generally speaking, does gain weight. Now, one rather lovely side effect of adding the X-Drive system is the acceleration of this car, which, if I come to a standstill, I've done this far too much, I'm sorry, Park Lane, but how can you not? <laughs> it is so fast. This is that same stretch of road I did that when I first originally tested the E-Class, and this M5 feels as fast, and it never gets old. Having the acceleration of a great four-wheel drive system like the X-Drive in a car like this, it adds so much to the experience. And when you're rolling, oh, it just picks up traction so well. It's just one of the most enjoyable cars in the world to pick up speed with. It's just so addictive doing that. So that X-Drive system allows zero to 60 in 3.4 seconds. Now, I don't want you to scoff at that as a number because when you first drive this car, it is that stat, that statistic, that you will feel and appreciate the most day to day. It is truly, truly mind-numbing how quick this car shoots off the mark. But one thing that lets down the X-Drive sometimes is in lower speeds, you do get a bit of lag from the engine where it quite doesn't give you the power you're looking for at that exact moment. Um, that's not something that you'll really experience in the hot V setup of the E63, but it is very reminiscent of every other turbo engine where the turbos are nestled outside of the cylinder bank. So yes, it does feel more like a turbo engine car. So to explore the handling, I'm gonna put everything into Sport Plus, apart from the steering. The steering in Sport and Sport Plus pretty much just gets artificially heavier you don't get more feedback through the wheel, so I'm not gonna bother with that. Now, how has that X-Drive system affected the handling of the car? The handling is in, it's, it's a bit of a strange one on, on the M5. We know that the car is similar weight to the previous car, um, so that should not be a factor in this. But with this car, it kind of comes more down to two factors. I think first of all, you feel superhuman when you're coming out of a corner because the system is very clever. It plants power where it needs to be planted and gets you out and you, you feel like you can drive faster and faster, which is the effect you get out of a lot of 
really good performance four-wheel drive systems. And you get this feeling of just infinite grip out of the X-Drive system. And then you realize you're driving an M Saloon, which has got infinite grip. What an amazing time we live in as petrol heads. So getting a four-wheel drive M5, I think you come into this car with that expectation anyway, that you can drive a lot faster with a lot more confidence. Unlike the rear-wheel drive M5s of the past, you're less worried about the tail kicking out. It's a lot more safe feeling, and of course it's an all-weather car now. But I have an issue with the steering, and it becomes apparent when you go through narrower and more, more exaggerated corners and you realize that you haven't really got that much being communicated back to you from this chubby steering wheel. It's not really telling you where the wheels are and it's completely different to, for example, when I was driving the M4 CS, yes, that's a more driver-focused car, but even the E63, which has got really sweet steering for an, for an electronic setup, this hasn't got the same feedback coming through it. And unfortunately, it makes the car feel heavier and it makes it feel like it's rolling a lot more and you're just not sure where the wheels are. And it kind of then stops you from pushing the car perhaps as hard as you could. So another big change in this car is the move away from the DCT 7-speed from the previous car. Now we've got an 8-speed ZF box. But the move away from the DCT has not harmed the shift times in my opinion. It is very comparable. It's way better than the M4 CS that I had, where you could cook an entire meal or go get yourself a Costa takeaway by the time that thing decided to shift. This does it exactly when you want it to, which is what I was hoping this car had, and it does, it's not a talking point. But one thing I must say, my God, do I despise these paddles. Let me explain. At the front, you've got a lovely metal finish, kind of like what you'd see in the AMG cars, but you touch the back, and the actual button is like this cheap feeling plastic, kind of like you have, or like all the car journos hated in the Audi R8. It's just such a shame. If that was the same material as the front, it would feel so much better. Now onto sound, it's a much bigger topic than the E63. It's kind of important in the M5 as well for the first time ever. We've got an exhaust button here, and it's better than the AMG one. Do you know why? Because its default position is flaps open and that is brilliant especially for me with my exhaust on or else hashtag on Instagram that is a big win well done BMW M for doing that why would you have the exhaust off as the default I don't get it now the button doesn't quite give you the same change when you switch it off like with the AMG so if I switch it off the main difference is you don't get those overruns that you would get with it on so if I put it back on Apart from that, the sound is still digitally piped in, in part by the speakers, that active sound management that BMW are no notorious for. But in daily driving, uh, again, my first impression when I was driving is that the rumble, when you're driving normally, pottering along at sort of 40 miles per hour as we are now, it's quite similar to the rumble in the E-Class, and it's a very pleasing rumble. The car does not get especially loud, in the higher rev ranges, loudish, I guess. And when the gears change at the top of the rev range, it gives a similar sort of fart as what you'd hear in the M4 or the M3. So it is a very M sounding exhaust system, a very M sounding V8. So it's exactly really what you expect from it. But I guess the, the V8 rumble, I'm quite surprised by. It's quite pleasing to my ears being an AMG driver as well. And that's what you're gonna hear the majority of the time. So quite like the sound. Now in terms of a daily driver, if I shove this into efficient now, this is a brilliant cruiser. On my first day picking up the car from Park Lane, I took the car all the way from Park Lane to Manchester. For our international viewers, that is about what, three to four hours drive from the center of London? Took four hours that day. And the M5 was just a joy for me, the driver, to drive there. Had to drive back the next day, so again, another three, four hour run. And it was just a joy to be in. It cruised so well, um, and it did the whole luxury side 
of the 5 Series really commendably. So what else? Um, driver's N, meh. Don't really like it. Um, it's digital, but it hardly goes out of its way to show you it's digital. Maybe that's what BMW customers want, but it doesn't make full use of the fact that it is digital. At least in the DB11, when you went through modes, there was a big difference and you could see, oh look, I'm in a sportier mode um, and the information changed, etc. But I don't know, I don't like it. I, I, I think it's, it's it, it feels old. It feels like the digital display in the first S-Class that had it, where there was only one style you could have and, and that was it. Um, gear stick, yay. Now I know a lot of people think this is over-designed, but ignoring that for a second, the fact that M cars have this here, for me, is a big plus point, because I just don't like having the stalks there to change gears, not in like the AMGs, the E63 having the stalk there. I, I, I just hate it. Um, this is where a gear stick belongs, even if it's automatic, in my opinion. And I love the fact that this is here. And it's a nice shape. Ergonomically, it's great to use. You've even got a park button, which is a luxury in an M car. Steering wheel, meh. We just don't get along. I think it's a great steering wheel, but it's not a great steering wheel for an M5, not for a performance BMW car. It's what I would expect to see in something like an X5, X7, 7 Series, a more luxurious version of the 5 Series. Not a, it's just too chunky. It hasn't got, it's not flat bottomed, it's not flat topped. It's really thick from here, uh, from your 10 to 2 position. It just doesn't scream anything sporty apart from the M buttons. The M buttons, I know the majority of people don't like them. I like them. I think they're well positioned. Um, you can get the rear wheel drive aspect activated way quicker than the E Class. Just that alone is, is, is a nice point but it's great to have them. I think the red color works as well because you know you're in something a bit special. I think BMW's performance wheels that you can buy as an optional extra for the M3, M4, M2, those are way better than this. Those are probably, the one I'm thinking of, uh, the Alcantara one, is probably the best performance steering wheel I've ever handled. Now we do have to address the rival. The reason we don't do head-to-heads on Remove Before Race is because we generally believe the person who's going to go out and buy an M5 is not going to be convinced to buy an E63 no matter what you tell him because he's looking for certain things. He's looking for the more adjustability that this car can give. He likes that certain soundtrack. He likes the design of the car, the, the design of the interior. And it's equally true vice versa. It doesn't matter what stats or car journalist mumbo jumbo we throw at the person who's looking for a certain type of product. So that's why we don't do head-to-heads. But I do want to address the E63 just in the differences between that car and this because I've owned that car, I've driven it extensively, I can fill you in at least, those of you who really do want to know what the differences are. So the E has 612 brake horsepower, which is more similar to the soon coming compact version of this car. So it's, it's 20 HP over this M5. It's got 100 newton meters of torque more at 850, and that is a figure you really, really feel is lacking in the M5 if you drive it back to back with the E63. Unlike horsepower, where you won't feel that difference, the torque figure you will really feel. It's that punch, that thing that pushes you back into the back of your seat, and that is, that is the main thing that you'll find power-wise in difference between the M5 and the E63. The other thing, steering is a lot more communicative in the E-Class. And of course, then there's the soundtrack, which the E63 is legendary for. Check out my videos, especially the one versus the AMG GTR at MB World to see just how loud the E63 is. But that's not where the story ends for the M5. There is a compact coming, as I said, and that ups the power to 617 brake horsepower, which is more than the E63. It doesn't affect the torque figure at all, unfortunately, which is a disappointment for me and surprising considering it's a turbo engine, so it should be easy. Uh, but the suspension has been tweaked, so perhaps there'll be a little bit of difference with regards to that heavy sort of feeling during handling. 
I'm hoping they adjust the steering a little bit as well. And the exhaust system is said to be a new one as well. So in conclusion, as I drive it more and more, I'm starting to discover more what the personality of this M5 is like. It's more tailored towards the driver. And you can see that with the cockpit that faces the driver, as we said earlier. It's got way more options in terms of adjustability for the driver as well. More than any normal driver would ever need, but just enough to keep the M driver happy. It's really, really fast. It's all weather and it's not twitchy and all the tech inside and the tech when you're away from the car, it's all brilliant. This is so much, so much car for money. For me on a personal level, it was always going to be difficult against the E63. And with the reasons I gave you, it probably at the moment is impossible. But this is a car that I would be happy to own. It is one that I would enjoy owning. And I totally get why this car is the no-brainer for the M fan. It's the no-brainer for the M5 lover. It's the best M product that I've driven this side of the M2. It's great when driving slow. It's phenomenally good when driving really, really fast. There's so much feel-good factor about driving and owning this car, but most of all, most importantly, it just puts an absolutely massive smile on your face when you're driving it. And really, that's all that it's all about. Well, my friends, I had an absolute blast driving this car. I hope this review has been informative for you. Huge thanks to Park Lane for getting this BMW M5 over to us to review. So if you like this video, please do subscribe. We're going to have loads more performance cars coming over the summer at Remove Before Race. Uh, please also like and share it as you always do. And we'll see you again soon. I think I'm going to savor that acceleration just one more time.